it's Rebecca Rogers. Welcome back to my channel. If you have never joined me before, welcome. And it's time for a weekly episode of Am I the Bad Apple? If you're someone that's new, people send in stories of situations where they don't know if they acted appropriately or not. We listen to them, we form an opinion, and we deem them a good apple, a bad apple, a crab apple. That's somewhere in the middle. Sometimes we agree and sometimes we don't, but that's just life. Anyways, we're gonna go ahead and get started with our four stories for today's episode of Am I the Bad Apple? Apple number one. Am I the bad apple for screaming at my brother's girlfriend? I, 20 female, am in college. I needed a specific class for my major, but the only time it was offered during the year interfered with my job. So I had to take it over summer. I talked to my parents about it and they reminded me that we had a family vacation over summer. So as long as we could still enjoy our family time and not have to cancel just for my class, they were fine for paying for me to take it over summer. I just wasn't allowed to miss the trip due to my class. While we were on the family trip, I'm told I'll be sharing a bed with my brother's girlfriend since they were still in high school. Oh, that's kind of weird, I don't really know her, but whatever. It should be fine, right? Wrong! The very first night, she not only snored so bad all night long, she kept hitting me in her sleep, flailing around, just flinging her arm. And they always landed on my face. I had to wake up for this class so early after entire days of exploring with my family and then entire nights of just a couple hours of sleep thanks to my brother's girlfriend. After multiple nights, I could feel myself unraveling. I burst into tears explaining to my mom how tired I was and all I wanted was one night of sleep. My mom actually blamed my fatigue on my college class. I just took it during the year, everything would be fine. Not only that, but my brother's girlfriend would crack jokes about how she bets she keeps me up all night because she's a nightmare to share a bed with. I didn't find those jokes funny. On top of that, this girl thought it was funny to go out of her way to photobomb every single photo I took on this entire vacation. Every single one. I didn't have a single cute photo without her making weird poses in the background or rude hand gestures in the back. And I was so tired, I didn't even notice for multiple days until when I finally did and asked her about it, she just started laughing. I started crying. I was so tired from not sleeping and so stressed because I was too tired to focus on my class. And not only was this girl making fun about how she was involuntarily inconveniencing me, she was going out of her way to just bother me because she thought it was funny. I snapped. I yelled at her to grow up. I said she was pathetic and that I refused to stay in the same bed as her. That if she hit me one more time in the middle of the night, I would match her punch for punch. And I honestly ended it with, I hope my brother dumped her one day. My family was mortified. They said that I ruined the trip. I just wish I was able to stay home at this point. They again blamed not only me, but the stupid college class I was taking. I said I would have been just as sleep deprived and delirious without it. It's not like I would have been able to sleep much more than I had been. So I need to know, am I the bad apple? This is a guest on your family trip. Where's your parents or your brother telling her to just stop acting like a child? Like, okay, she's a crazy sleeper, whatever. That's not something that she can help, I guess. I don't know. But still, I don't think that you can really control if you flail in your sleep, but laughing about it? If I was someone that slept like that and I had to share a bed with them, I would be mortified. I would profusely apologize all the time, all the time. To make fun of someone being sleep deprived because of you, that's so wrong. And the photobomb thing is so high school, that really stinks. But I do think that some of the things that you said were like a little bit crossing the line. Like you hope your brother dumps her. I mean, you can think that all you want, but that's really rude to say to somebody's face. Don't say that. I don't think it was ridiculous for you to refuse to sleep in the same bed as her. I don't know if I would have said, every time you hit me, I'm gonna punch you back. And again, I know you were probably delirious in, you said you were unraveling. Sleep deprivation is not a joke. People really can't function as normal human beings when they don't get enough sleep. That doesn't mean that I agree with what you were saying. So do I think you're the bad apple? 
no, I don't, but I don't think you're the good apple either. I'm gonna have to go with the crab apple because I think you were completely justified in being frustrated just in general, right? Now your parents. Family trip grades should be grades, not... What? You're paying for college. Don't you want they're gonna do well in college? And who's who's taking these photos, right? Like, I, I'm assuming they're not all selfies. Like, it's not... I'm not in high school anymore. That was like really the big selfie age of travel photos. I'm assuming someone's taking these photos. There's not a grown adult that notices the girlfriend in the background acting a fool. Why can't you tell her to like, hey, move or hey, you're getting out of the photo. Like every single photo, I can see if someone taking the photo missed a few, like didn't notice the girl in the background for some of them. You didn't notice that people were probably flicking off the camera and every photo here's my thing on significant others on family trips okay if you can't afford for everyone to go and be comfortable like if you have someone that's a crazy sleeper and it's causing someone else to be to not enjoy the trip and to be miserable they don't need to be sharing a bed and if you can't afford that that's okay that's not always an option for everyone but then don't bring the significant others to me there's no reason to inconvenience everyone else just so that one person isn't like don't bring the significant others if you can't fit everybody in a way that they can function as people I feel like that's common sense is that not common sense what do you guys do with family trips like do you bring the significant others do you guys do the bed sharing stuff like how how do you guys do that i'm curious apple number two am i the bad apple for showing up the bride I, 24 female, attended my boyfriend's 25 male's sister-in-law, 27 female's wedding, who's his brother's wife's sister, and now no one is talking to him, his sister, or me. I just graduated college and am currently in the job market. I'm thankful enough that my boyfriend of almost three years offered to let me move in with him while I try to make my $13 an hour internship into a livable career. But that being said, I'm very strapped for cash. The money I do have goes to student loan payment and groceries while he takes care of the rest. I met his in-laws about two years ago at his brother's wedding and it seemed like we all hit it off. I guess for context, I should say they're white and I'm Indian. I had a year to save money for a new dress when we got saved the dates for this wedding, but it seemed like such a waste of money. I was still a full-time student and the money I made all my bills. I decided to just wear one of my old lingas, which is very, very simple. It's a pale blue with a gold design. I didn't wear bangles or a nath, just the outfit, a simple pair of hoop earrings, and my heels. His sister is the only one in the family that's on my side, saying that they're being intolerant of my culture, and even if I was in an evening dress, people would have still been talking about me being there. I feel awful, and I want to apologize, but my boyfriend says it's not my fault and that the families are just overreacting. I don't know if I agree with him. It was a special day for the bride and maybe I should have asked to borrow a Western style dress from one of my friends or something. Should I have tried to blend into their culture more? I really don't want my boyfriend and his sister to lose their family over this. So am I the bad apple? No, no, there's only one rule at a wedding. You don't wear white. That's it! I don't see a problem! The ceremony was beautiful, and my boyfriend and I were walking into the reception. At first I thought everyone was staring at me because, you know, brown person at old money New England wedding and all that. But my boyfriend's mom comes up to me and asks, what are you wearing? She said that the bride is sobbing because people are talking about how pretty my dress is instead of hers and paying more attention to me than the bride. Honestly, I didn't know what to do. It was a black tie event and everyone was dressed very nicely and the bride looked stunning. The only difference was I wasn't in Western wear. I asked what she wanted me to do and she asked if I had any other dresses. Other than more dressy lingas or summer dresses, I said no. I offered to go home if she was that uncomfortable with my being there. My mom said, that's such a dramatic response, but you can leave if you want to. My boyfriend wanted to just leave because he didn't want to make a scene and honestly, I didn't feel comfortable being there at all. His family and his in-laws aren't talking to us and the bride demands an apology. She apparently made a comment along the lines of, if she works all the time and he pays all the bills, I don't understand why she couldn't have just bought any dress. And I also, I really need to say, I really hope that I pronounced Lenga correctly. If I didn't, I'm really sorry. 
I'm sure there's a lot of people watching this that don't actually know what a lenga is and I again I really hope I'm saying that correctly and if I'm not I'm very very sorry but I want to put one on the screen just so that everyone that's listening really knows what we're talking about. This is a lenga. They are beautiful. I have never worn one before. I'm not from this culture, but I think they're super pretty. I think they're super bright, and I don't think it's crazy to wear this to a wedding. How dare everybody talk about someone being at my wedding that I invited? Girl, come on. So to be making an entire scene because someone's in a dress that looks really pretty, are the bridesmaids not also in dresses that are really pretty? I just, I don't see why they were so angry at her. I don't think she's the bad apple. I don't see the big deal. It's very wedding-esque. It's, it, it checks all the boxes that it's supposed to for a wedding. I think it's very appropriate. I think the sister's right. I think it's very judgmental. It's not exactly what everyone wears in the West, so it's bad. No, that's not, that's not how that works. I think the family's being bad apples. I think the bride might be all in her feelings because it's her wedding day. I genuinely hope that after the wedding's over, even like a week or two later, she looks back and is like, wow, I was being a bridezilla. So sorry about that. I really hope that happens. But I have to go good apple on this one. You know, like this for me, this girl's a good apple. I don't see anything wrong with what she was doing. She wasn't trying to be malicious. She even offered to leave if she was making anyone uncomfortable. She adhered to everything that she was supposed to in regards to a wedding wardrobe. Good apple. Apple number three. Am I the bad apple for asking my wife for help? I've been married to Stella for seven years now. Together we have five children. Two daughters from my previous relationship, 11 and 7, a son and daughter from Stella's previous relationship, 13 and 8, and one son together, Lucas, who's two. My children are 50-50 custody, while my stepchildren only see their biological father every second weekend. My wife and I agreed to split finances and have agreed to keep most things separate, aside from joint accounts for essentials like bills, groceries, things like that. We both used to be high earners, though had really bad hours. When our parental leave for Lucas was finishing, our children begged for us to not go back to work. They hated the before and after school care and wanted us to be around. In the end, my wife did go back to work, but I quit my job and got a new one. It was much lower pay, but it was essentially school hours, so I was able to be there for our kids. Stella has been paying a little bit more of our joint expenses, but otherwise it's been fine. I wouldn't say the split's been firm though. I do buy stuff for my stepchildren or pay when I take them all out or things like that. It's really just big payments that are separate. Anyway, that my oldest daughter goes to a private school. My youngest is about to be high school age, but I realized that on my current pay, I couldn't afford to send both kids to private school. My ex is barely willing to pay the costs related to public school, let alone a private one. This private school is so much better than the nearby public school, and I know my youngest wants to go to her sister's school, so I tried to talk to Stella and ask if she would be willing to help me out. It's education, and she's very close with my daughters, so it's not like I'm asking her to pay for something crazy. Stella refused. And I would have accepted it, even though I was really annoyed. But Stella went on to say that I knew we were split finances, and I made my choice when I took a lower paying job. That I got less time for less money. So that I can't complain that I'm paid less. I got really upset about that. I didn't stay home for fun. It was for our family, for our children. I loved my job, but I had to sacrifice it for them, and it was worth it, but still. I'm home because they asked us to stay home. Stella basically said that it was my decision, so tough luck. I got really angry with that, so I told her she knew the consequences of her job, so she can deal with her children then. If her money's not going to be used on mine, I'm not going to use my extra time on hers, so they can stay in after school care until their old hours. Stella got super pissed, accusing me of using her for her money and calling me a complete jerk. She couldn't believe I suggested that for my own stepchildren. We argued pretty bad. Stella thinks I'm being greedy, selfish, and petty, but it's not like I'm asking to mooch. I would still foot 50% of it and get my ex to contribute as much as I possibly can. Yes, moving jobs was my choice, but it was for all the children, our entire family. Besides, I literally take care of my stepchildren more than my own because of the custody arrangements. I'm not just being lazy or trying to focus on my own kids. I've been there 
for all of them. So I think it's frankly unfair for her to refuse to even help a little bit. Obviously, she doesn't agree. So we both need to know who is the bad apple. Every time, every single time, we get a step parent, step kid situation, blah, 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 blah. It's always about the darn private school tuition. Always. Here's my genuine opinion on this situation. Stay at home parents, and I know that it's usually stay at home moms, but in this case, is stay at home father. Not even a stay at home father, like he took a different job so he could be home to take care of the kids. So he's not a stay at home father, but he's a finagling things to be home with the kids. But I'm using stay at home parents as an example because when that happens, you know, you have one, their job, like that is a job, is taking care of the children. And that doesn't necessarily come with a financial gain, but that doesn't mean that the other parent just gets to be financially abusive or manipulative, you know? This dad is going to his own job and then coming home and doing another job, which is not stay at home dad, but like semi at home dad. He's doing the childcare, he's probably making the dinner for the kids, he's helping with the homework. That alone is its own job. So no, I don't agree with the wife saying like, oh, you made your choice, no. It's for the family. Like, yeah, it was a choice for the family, for your kids too. All the kids benefit from this. I'm sure they love having him home. Usually I'm very much of the opinion like, hey, if it's like split for your kids, it's split for your kids. But this is a little bit of a different situation because the dad is home for everybody. I don't think it would be unreasonable to take the childcare costs that you're saving, putting it towards extra stuff that could go to the daughter's school. I know you said after school care, I'm just assuming it's something that's paid for because I'm assuming they don't all go to the same school, right? So there's gotta be some child care thing that you're sending them to after. And if you're saving money on that, I really think that could go to the school pot. What I don't like is when you then use the kids in your little war. Well, you're not gonna pay this for my kid, so then your kid's not gonna get help from me after school and they can stay after school care. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Before you did that, I had Stella as the bad apple, and then you as the good apple, but then you just kind of like chucked that out of the window. So I'm going to have to go with the bad batch. We just got a bunch of bad apples here. Stop using kids in your manipulative games with your spouses. Stop it. It's not okay. Apple number four. Am I the bad apple for kicking my father out of our home? My mother passed away two years ago, my sister is disabled, and my father was diagnosed with prostate cancer. And on top of that, my family's always been very poor. I was able to escape poverty by taking on a ton of student loan debt, and now my husband and I live comfortably with good jobs. When my mother passed, my dad made me promise to take care of my sister if anything ever happened to him. This really upset me. I felt like that wasn't my burden to bear, and I felt very guilty that I would pass that on to my husband. We discussed it together, and we came to the conclusion that we would take care if need be. So when my dad was diagnosed with cancer, he had nobody to drive him to appointments, he was lethargic due to radiation therapy. So at the time, we decided to move in both, my dad and my sister. Then my dad beat cancer. If I'm being honest, I really thought my dad's days were numbered. I didn't expect him to live long term. He's 70 with no savings and expects me to just pay for him and cook for him. I'm really starting to regret my decision. After I left for college, my parents' life really made a turn for the worse because they're completely different people now. It's as if my sister and I had completely different childhoods and we're only three years apart. I know my parents always resented me for leaving and I guess taking them in was me trying to make up for it. Before he moved in, I asked my dad to pay 20% of our rent with his social security, which he said was no problem. But whenever rent is due, he doesn't have it because he's behind on so many other bills. It's one thing if he explained this to me like an adult, but he always waits until I have to ask for it and he just shrugged it off like, oh, I don't have it. Everything's just so expensive these days. It's almost like he's talking down to me and trying to take advantage of me. I never really liked my father personally. I loved my mother. And he was a bad husband to her. But then I start to think about all the things that he did to help me succeed and memories of what I've put him through as a father and I wonder if I'm being too hard on him. So he doesn't pay rent 
okay, that's annoying and will make my life a bit harder, but he also complains about how small his room is compared to his last place. He complains about how I decorated the living room. He expects me to pay for his food and have dinner ready by a certain time. And he's even said it himself. You're not gonna throw us out on the street. I'm so stressed. And I have a husband to keep happy on top of this. I even had to up my anxiety meds. So I wanna try to contact one of his estranged siblings to see if he can live with them. I'm honestly so sick of him. Does that make me the bad apple? This one feels really complicated to me. Cause you already took in one adult that needs a lot of extra care. And it's not even something you volunteered for, it's something that you were told to do and you accepted that. But then to have to care for two grown adults who all need care for the rest of your or their lives, that's a lot. And I bet that also stops you from having a family of your own if you wanted one. I don't think you're a bad apple for being frustrated with the cards that you were dealt. I also don't consider you a bad apple to try and find another family member for your dad to go live with. And I know there's gonna be a lot of people, especially older people in the comments, they're like, no, that's what you do for family and parents. But my opinion, you know, y'all know this from some previous stories. I'm just not that kind of a person. Like there's a difference between caring for a parent that's super appreciative of it and caring for a parent that nothing's ever good enough and blah, blah, blah. Okay, then why are you here? And it's not like you're even trying to put your dad on the street. You're not even putting him in a home or anything. You're finding another family member to care for him. I don't think that makes you bad at all. I think that because you decided to change your stars, it was then decided that you could care for everybody. And that's a lot of responsibility to put on one person that didn't ask for that. And I don't think asking other family for help makes you bad. I really don't. So I'm gonna go with good apple on this one. I guess it wasn't as complicated as I thought. Like at first it felt really complicated, but then at the end of the day, I think she's overwhelmed and frustrated and feels like she's a terrible daughter because of it, but I don't think she is. I think she's just needs help. And I think that's fine. I think that's reasonable. Just like the dad asked for help and got it. The sister needed help and got it. She's asking for help and is just going to another family member for it. And I don't think that's unreasonable. All right, my votes. Let's see, one crab apple, two good apples, and one complete bad batch. Those are my votes for today. Definitely let me know down in the comments what your votes were. Were they the same? Were they any different? I would love to hear your reasonings, whether you agreed or disagreed with me. I would love to hear your thoughts. And as always, keep sending in your submissions to the little subreddit that I'm still learning how to use. It is r slash am I the bad apple. And I just want to say thank you for being a part of this community. Whether you're a new member or a returning member, I love you. And I'm so happy that you're here. And I'll see you next week. Bye, my lovelies. Mwah.